Hi all. In this video, we are going to learn about the chapter microorganisms. So before getting into the chapter, you have to know what the word microorganism means. So just by looking at this word, I can split this word into two. One is micro, another one is organism. So what do you mean by micro? Micro means something which is very very small. Next organisms. What do you mean by organisms? All the living beings. So micro means something which is very very small. Organism means living beings. So in this chapter we are going to deal about extremely small living beings. So now another important point is microorganisms are microscopic. microscopic so these organisms are microscopic what do you mean by that that means only with the help of microscope i will be able to see the microorganisms so only with the help of microscope so what is this microscope it is an instrument which is going to show us any object in a very enlarged manner Now if i keep a microorganism in the bottom of the microscope i'll be able to see that microorganism in a very enlarged way even around me there are many microorganisms but i'm not able to see with my naked eye with my eye i'm not able to see only with the help of a microscope i'm able to see that microorganism Therefore microorganisms are known as microscopic because they can be visible only by looking under the microscope. So these are the basics about the microorganisms. Now we are going to see about the categories of microorganisms. Categories of microorganism So totally there are five categories of microorganisms. The first one is bacteria. Second one is algae. Third one is protozoa. Fourth one is fungi and the last one is the virus. So these are the five categories of microorganisms. let us see them one by one first let us see about the bacteria so before seeing about each category i want to tell one important point so these microorganisms they are present everywhere around us even in the hottest region even in the coldest region even in the driest region it is present everywhere it is not like these microorganisms will be present only in the cool area only in the hot area it is not like that it is present everywhere in every single climate it is present so this is very very important and one one more important point is microorganisms they are not always harmful some are harmful and some microorganisms are also useful to us okay so these are the two important points now let us look about the bacteria microorganism so bacteria is a unicellular microorganism what do you mean by unicellular made up of one single cell so bacteria is made up of one cell so what do you mean by a cell cell is something which is extremely very small we all know that because we have learned about cells in the previous years so bacteria is unicellular so it is made up of one single cell most important property of bacteria is they come in different shapes they come in different shapes now for example take cocci bacteria cocci is a bacteria this bacteria is spherical in shape next if you take bacillus bacteria 
this bacillus bacteria is rod shape next if you take spirilla bacteria this is spiral in shape so if someone is asking you to tell about bacteria the first point which should come to your mind is bacteria is a unicellular organism that means it is made up of a single cell the second important point is they come in different shapes because cocci bacteria is spherical in shape bacillus bacteria is rod shape spirilla bacteria is spiral in shape so for every single category of microorganism let us learn two examples the first example of bacteria is lactobacillus another example is rhizobium so these are the two examples of bacteria it is enough if you know two examples for each category of microorganism now let us look into the second category of microorganism which is algae so algae algae is both unicellular as well as multicellular some algae they are unicellular organisms some algae are multicellular organisms unicellular means made up of one cell multicellular means made up of more than one cell okay so now important characteristics of algae is important to know so the important point is they are plant like organisms plant like organisms you know that plants have a cell wall and they also have chlorophyll so what do you mean by chlorophyll this chlorophyll is very important for for the plants because only with the help of chlorophyll they prepare their own food that process is known as photosynthesis we know that so chlorophyll is used for the plants for preparing their own food in the presence of the sunlight next important point is they are autotrophic in nature what do you mean by autotrophic in nature autotrophic means they can prepare the food on their own so algae they can make their own food they can prepare their own food they know they don't need the help of any other they can prepare their own food that is why they are called plant like organisms and they are autotrophic in nature so let us learn two examples for this algae wallbox next nostoc so these are the two examples of algae so if someone is asking you to tell about algae just tell unicellular as well as multicellular algae are present in around us they are plant like organisms this is important point plants have cell walls as well as chlorophyll chlorophyll is very important because that is what is used for the plants to prepare their own food they are autotrophic autotrophic means they can prepare food on their own through the method of photosynthesis so algae can prepare their own food examples are wallbox and nostoc the third category is protozoa so protozoa is animal like organism so here we saw plant like organism and algae so if someone is asking you to write the difference between an algae and protozoa you can quote out this important difference algae is plant like organism protozoa protozoa is animal like organism so animal like organism means they have no cell and no chlorophyll it is very clear that they don't have any cell and they don't have chlorophyll because plants have cell and chlorophyll here it is animal so they don't have cell they don't have chlorophyll too no chlorophyll means protozoa cannot prepare food on its own it is dependent on other organisms for the food 
so therefore since it is dependent on other organisms for food they are called as heterotrophic heterotrophic means they cannot prepare food on their own they are in seek of help from other organisms let us see two examples of protozoa one is amoeba another one is paramecium these are the two examples of protozoa so if someone is asking you to tell about protozoa tell they are animal like organism since they are animal like organism they do not have cell and they do not have chlorophyll if no chlorophyll is there they cannot prepare food on their own so they need the help from other organisms for getting food hence they are known as heterotrophic and examples are amoeba and paramecium the next category is fungi so fungi they are non chlorophyllous non chlorophyllous means they do not have chlorophyll if they do not have chlorophyll they cannot prepare food on their own it is very clear so fungi means they are non chlorophyllous so they cannot prepare food on their own because there is no chlorophyll next they feed on this is very important point dead and decaying matter for example if you take a bread mold in rainy seasons you would have noted that on top of the bread some greenish like layer will be formed and after few more hours brownish layer will be formed so that layer which has been formed is known as fungi and the name of that fungi is bread mold the other name for this bread mold is rhizophus this is the other name for the bread mold so they feed on dead and decay matter so this is very important example another example is penicillium penicillium is one useful fungi because this is used to make the vaccines like penicillin penicillin okay so therefore fungi useful example is penicillium one more example is bread mold the other name is rhizophus i explain what a bread mold is next they are heterotrophic in nature why they are heterotrophic in nature because there is no chlorophyll means they cannot prepare food on their own heterotrophic means they depend for the nutrition or food from some other organism therefore this is about the fungi now let us look into the last type which is virus this is the last category of a microorganism so virus if you take virus this is very much different from all other microorganisms still they have not completely studied about virus because they come between the non living and living still the study has not been completed by anyone about virus because they come between non living and living whenever the virus is outside the body of a living organism we can say they are non living whenever the virus enters the living organism we can say that the virus is living so now for example if the virus has entered inside the body of the living organism it won't easily adapt the body it will take a very long time for the body to adapt that virus and even after the virus leaves out from our body still it will be present inside our body for few more days after those days only the virus will die till then it will be alive inside our body even though it has come out from our body so this is very much important about the virus example we know the very most famous example which is corona so corona virus is one example another example is 
bacteriophage so these are the two examples of virus so virus this is still in study we are not able to study it completely because it is coming between non living and living when the virus is present inside the body of the living organism we can call it living when it is outside the body of the living organism we can call it as non living so this is about the virus and now we have learned the five categories of microorganism i hope you all understood thank you so much